In this video I'm going to be replacing my tank level monitor system and the way this is supposed to work is you push for battery then you have a fresh tank shows empty, black tank shows empty. However this is after the tanks have been cleaned real well and we're still winterized and sure enough as soon as I start using it I'm going to get some false readings. And those of you that have had a tank monitoring system in an RV for a while know that they really don't work. And I've put up with this system for the last six years and I've just about had it with the fact that they just don't work. And this is going to be a two-part video and in the first part I'm going to explain the various tank monitoring systems and show you what I'm going to install and in the second part I'm actually going to install it. Now two of the most popular systems are one made by Kib and one made by American Technology Components. These are found in most of the RVs that come off the assembly line these days. The problem is they just don't work very well. And here is a circuit board for the American Technology Components, and here is a circuit board for the KIB. These actually work about the same, and there's nothing very sophisticated about this. This is an LM339, which is a quad comparator, and they go to something called a well nut. And a well nut, more or less, is just a bolt that goes into the side of the tank, and there's usually four of them. One is at the bottom for reference, and as the water level rises, those bolts will short out, which gives you the different voltages. And the advantage of both of these systems is there is no current consumed when these switches are not pushed. And the difference between this one and this one is we have two extra wires coming off the board. One wire is labeled DP, and that is for the DSI fault, the direct spark ignition on the water heater if you have one. That will light the LED here. And the second one is for the water pump, and that's actually these two LEDs. So all this does is this actually lights the LED for those functions. We want to keep those functions, so we're going to add those. Now if you don't want to go through the whole hassle of installing a new panel and new sensors, there's an alternative. And that's installing something called a Horst Miracle Probe. And these new probes don't foul like the walnuts do. They're at least better than what you have. So that might be an alternative. And I did that project on my last RV. And there's a link here that you can go to that project. When I had my boat, I had a tank system called the Profile 2 made by New Providence Marine. And it used a foil system. And the thing was flawless. It worked for six years without any problems at all. And a couple years ago, I was thinking about designing my own tank system. However, there's plenty of the commercial ones on the market. And that way, it'll alleviate you from having to build another one of my projects. And I talked to the vice president of the company and was lamenting to him about how bad the RV systems are. And he said, you know, we can't sell to the RV industry. And I said, well, how come? And he said, well, you know, the thing is, they want cheap. Our system costs around $300. They just won't buy it. They don't care if it works or not as long as it's cheap. And I ended up going with the sea level system primarily because you can run more than one monitor. So I plan on putting the monitor in my console and then another monitor in the wet bay where my dump tanks and things are at. Now for the sea level system as well as the New Providence Marine system, you order the monitor separately from the sensor, so you order the number and types of sensors you need. The New Providence Marine, one that I had in the boat, would handle eight sensors. This will handle four. So, you know, this is a little more limited, but four is all I need for my RV. Now, the way these work is they basically are just a uh, adhesive backed, and it's a flexible circuit board. They just go on the side of the tank. And this is the six inch size and all my tanks are about six and a half or seven inches. Here's a 12 inch sensor and they also make a 16 inch sensor. And where these are segmented, you can actually cut a sensor to length. And if you have a real large tank, you can stack these sensors. So you could put one sensor like at the top of the tank and one sensor at the bottom of the tank like that. And there's a special mode and a setup for that. Now basically these things are just wall mount. And on the back, uh, one caution is this is actually the circuit board. So the back side of the bezel is a circuit board. If you mount it in a metal enclosure, you're going to have to buy an optional gasket around there to keep this from shorting out. And there is a metal partition in my wet bay where I want to mount the external one. However, what I did is I just printed a 3D bezel and this just fits in here. And it also protects the edge from getting any kind of water or anything in it. 
I've got the patterns for all these 3D printed objects on my website, so you can just download those. And that'll work for the outside monitor. For the inside monitor, I made another one. This will actually screw into this front bezel, and this goes into the opening from my original monitor, and it screws into the back of the opening, so that kind of clamshells uh, the monitor. And also, you know, I mentioned that I do have a water pump and a DSI fault light. And I'm going to mount those in my panel with this because there is no version of this that has a DSI and water pump indicator. Now you can buy several different versions of this. You can buy it in a four, three or two tank. You can buy them with LP detector. You can buy them with an on off switch for the water pump and as well as Bluetooth connectivity. You can get all kinds of different ones. And now I have a black water tank, which will go here and a fresh water tank, which will go there. And then I have two gray tanks. One will be this one. And then I'm going to designate the other one galley. Now one issue I discovered is these things run about 30 to 40 milliamp years when they're in standby mode. So if I have two of them running, I'm running 80 milliamp years or so. And that to me is just too much for the battery drain. So I'm going to add an on-off switch. And this is just a standard micro on-off switch. And I noticed there is an opening for two switches. And I 3D printed a new back cover to replace the original one that's a little bit narrower which will provide easier access to the switch. It's just a little membrane and you can just cut that out and you can mount the switch in. So for the tank that's going to be in the wet bay I'm going to have an on off switch here. And for the inside monitor since I had more room I'm just going to put it in here and this is going to be the on off switch. And if you watch any of my other videos you know that I like to put surge protection on all my 12 volt circuits. So I also designed the circuit board here, and I don't have it populated yet, but this will have a surge suppressor on it. So these will be surge suppressed, and that circuit board just mounts into here into these two bosses for this replacement cover. And I actually talked to the company, and they told me how to wire the two monitors up because the owner's manual didn't show the wiring diagram. So we're going to test that before I put it in. When they come from the factory, they're all set up for freshwater tank. These all go parallel, so the black leads go together, which is ground, and the blue lead ties all together, which is both a 12 volt going to the circuit board, plus all four of them transmit serial data over the same wire. Now you have to tell the tank monitor which one is which, and the way you do that on the circuit board is there is a gray mark, a black mark, and an alternate. So if you have a freshwater tank, you don't do anything. If you want a gray water tank, you actually cut the top of this off, which breaks a wire and sets this up to self-identify that it's a gray tank. And likewise with a black tank, if you cut that wire, it'll set itself up as a black tank. And then for the galley tank, you cut that wire plus the center wire. And if you do make a mistake cutting the tabs, as long as you don't cut the center alt tab, you can return the sensor back to a fresh water tank by cutting the opposite tab. Now this varies with sensor model, so you have to look at the owner's manual to make sure you're doing it right. And this is the basic setup. I have one 6 inch sensor connected to the panel. And currently I'm showing on the ammeter about 40 milliampers of load. If I depress battery, that gives us about 80 milliampers of load. And I have not cut this, so this should report as a fresh water tank. And if we cycle through, fresh water shows zero. Gray tank shows open, galley shows open, black shows open. And if you double press this, the decimal place lights and that tells you you now have five minutes. So if you're filling the tank, you can read it. Or you can see by putting my hand on here, I'm making a capacitive connection and that's how this works. This measures the capacitance through water. And then by depressing again, it shuts it off. So you see we had a fresh water tank. So now I'm going to cut the first sensor. Let's see if it changes from fresh to gray. So we're going to snip this off. And if we look at fresh, open, gray is now zero. So indeed, this moved from fresh to gray. And now I have all four sensors connected. We have fresh, gray, galley, and black. Now you see on the black tank and on the gray tank, we're showing some readings, and that is because of the interaction of these things setting here. So if I move the gray tank so that it's away from the rest of the sensors, then it shows zero. And now I have both monitors connected. 
So I can press the fresh there and the gray there and they are working simultaneously just like what we wanted. And here is a wiring diagram of how you connect both panels to the sensor system. You'll see that all four sensors are parallel and yet the two panels are independently powered by the red leads. And one thing that I do need to point out is that this is not a substitute for the manual. This just gives you kind of an idea of what to expect if you do install a system, but by all means go by the manual. And the last step for the sensors before installing them is I just marked them black, gray, fresh water, and galley just so that it's easier for me to see this than it is to look at the tabs that I cut off. So that completes video part one. In video part two, we'll actually do the installation into the RV. And I encourage you to go to my website for more information where I have all these drawings plus expanded information.